Christie's Direct, the animal grooming experts. With over 20 years experience, Christie's Direct has grown to over 30 employees, all with the aim of providing our customers with high quality products and market leading customer service. Our warehouse holds thousands of product ranges from leading international brands. We stock everything the professional groomer needs, from professional shampoos, dryers, baths, tables and scissors to suit all needs. Give our sales team a call today on 028 276 66879. My name's Stuart Simons and I own Groom Dog City and this is Ralph the Soft-Coated Wheaton Terrier. Now Ralph's um, slightly different to other soft-coated Wheatons because you might have noticed, you might not, he's only got three legs. Um, so we're going to learn, well we're going to, I'm going to try and demonstrate how to safely groom him having only three legs and we'll little, hopefully give you some little tricks about how you can cover the little stumpy bit up and obviously for safety because he's only got three legs I've got my H bar and I've got some nooses at hand just in case he gets tired I might use a belly strap I might not depending on how much effort it takes for him to continue through the whole groom so that's why all the safety stuff's in place I'm just giving him a little brush out at the moment uh, all right darling just to make sure that all the knots are gone and then we can crack on and get him looking gorgeous as I know he can look. So first up, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take his back down because it's summer at the moment and his owner, his dad, he wants him quite short on the back so I'm going to use an extension comb with a number 10 clipper blade. So I've got my clippers and I've got an extension comb and I'm going to do it on a 13 millimetre. These are those magnetic um, comb attachments. They're not the colour ones, but I really like these, just in case you're interested. And they just literally slot on and clip in. Done. So I'm going to take it from here, the osput, all the way down the back. And you'll see exactly how far I take it. I'm going to give them some kind of line on the back leg. I'll show you the back leg. I'll do this back leg on the other side so that you can see properly. But I'm going to follow the muscle line to show his muscle on the back leg and then I'm going to get that nice angulation in the back leg. So first of all, I'm going to start from the osteoporosis down the back, taking some of this bulk out of the back and giving it a nice length. All the time that I'm, I'm working with him, I'm supporting him with my other hand. It's only because it's a long time for a dog with three legs to stand, so I want to make sure that it's as easy as possible for him to get through the groom, because obviously he's still got to be groomed and he's so well looked after. So we want to make sure it's a really nice experience for him. So I'm always supporting him underneath his tail to make sure he can stand properly. So I'm taking the bulk of the coat out, ah, ah, good boy. And what I'm doing is I'm coming off, I'm coming down this way and I'm coming off the rib and letting it drop because they're supposed to have a natural line. So it should be, the coat should just be an extension of the rib cage. That's it. Any Clipper marks, you can see these little marks here. Any of those can be gone, we can get rid of those with thinners a bit later on. So we'll get, just get the bulk off for, for now. So I'm going down from under the ear to the shoulder and then again just skimming off 
just giving myself a nice outline of the dog shape that I want at the end. It's hard because he's turning this way a little bit because he's favouring this leg, so you have to keep adjusting him just so that you can get the right angle. So here we're following the muscle line. And I'm just scooping out down the back so that we can show this nice angulation on the back leg. So you can see it's just falling off and dropping down. We can make that look much nicer with some thinners later, but that you can see the kind of, the sort of look I'm going for. So then we go to the other side. Good boy. And we do the same on this side. So the tricky thing is, is that you have to decide what you're going to do. What I tend to do is follow the skirt line all the way up and hide a stump, the stump at the back with the skirt. Uh, that way I just think it looks more in keeping with, with the haircut. Some people might actually take it shorter there because that's, that's where the leg would come in, but I think it's best just to hide the stump and maybe trim, uh, trim it up with some scissors or shears at the end. Right, so now, I've got the main shape in, and now I'm going to change the attachment to a little bit shorter. I'm going to go to a 10, 10 millimetres. Clip it on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it a little bit shorter, tighter in here, and I'm going to take it tighter in here, just to give a more compact look. It still needs to look natural, but I'm going to take these bits slightly in. It just gives, you are able to give, get more angulation on the back leg if you take it in a bit more here and here at the front. So the chest should just be flat. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. So that three millimetres is going to make all the difference at the end. And then here. So I'm just scooping off the natural line of the leg. Like that. So, just to go over what we've done, we've done this on the 13 millimetres, we've gone down the muscle line, we've taken it in here, and we've taken it in here. And then, once we've got the legs and the skirt and everything scissored up, it should look a beautifully balanced doggy. <laughs>
because he's not comfortable with me lifting his front legs up. So I'm, I'm putting the noose on just for safety. I don't want him to be nervous. It actually reassures him. It means that he knows that where he's got to stay. It gives him boundaries. So I'm hoping that that's going to help him with this little bit because we need to clip out under his paws. So if I'm going to try and get him to sit down, sit down. Good boy, good boy. And I'm going to lift his foot up from behind. That's it. He's completely safe. He's not going to fall off. And we can clip the foot out nice and safely. I use a 40 blade to clip these feet out. I've constantly got hold of him, so there's no way that he's going to go. And then we're done. So that's his feet clipped out. I like this dog's coat's got quite a lot of static and I find that the scissoring spray takes the static out. So I'm just going to give it a quick, very, very quick spray. It's not too much, otherwise it gets the coat too wet and then just brush it through. It just takes that static away. Makes it easier for me to see exactly what I'm doing. So the way I do it, I always start with the foot. So find my scissors. And I go straight across the front of the paw, straight across. And take that all out. Then I do the same at the side. So in a way, you're sort of making a square square where the foot is because I find it just makes it easier to shape. That's just my own little trick. And then I just round the corners off. I find that it makes doing a foot easier to start with a square. He's leaning this way and you just want to make sure that his weight's in the right place so that you're getting the hair that you need. Again. So there's your round foot. And now I'm going to go to the back of the, the hock and try and shape that up a bit for him. So you can use curves. So we're following the line of the roundness. Is that a word? <laughs> Good boy. So you can see you're making this hock stand out slightly and eventually what will happen is we'll take it nice and short in this area and he should look like almost like he's standing on tiptoes, he says. I'm just going to finish off this side of the leg, rounding it up, exactly the same as the front really. But not forgetting, because he's got three legs, this side's really visible. So you want it to be as tidy as the other side. So to tidy that up, I always just go over it with thinners. It makes it look a little bit less severe. So we're getting somewhere now. For me, that's how I start my leg. Then we need to take this because we don't want it to go short to long. So we just want to start blending it in a bit. All right, darling, I know, I know. I use thinners a lot. And 
And then what we'll do, before I thin any more or take any more of that way out, I'm gonna take the front out slightly. So, I'm gonna take it from here. is a straight down in a nice line. Ideally I need to take a little bit more out of here because we need to get that angulation in the back leg. So can you see how he's starting to look a bit more tiptoey. So that's nearly there. Can you see the shape of it? <laughs> I don't know who I'm talking to. <laughs> so when we see him from behind, we need a nice parallel leg. So I've got to take some more hair from inside here. And again, it's really vis visible because obviously he's got another, not hasn't got another back leg. So we've got to make sure that the job's done properly. So I'm just gonna brush all this up. Um, get my scissors. the skirt in just get him to stand properly he leans towards me so it's he always needs to be corrected it's not his fault it's just how he is so I always just lift it up a little bit from where the join is so the bottom of the last rib blend it in The, tra the thing with a soft coated Wheaton is because every scissor mark you'll be able to see. So you need to use your thinners a lot to blend, to try and make it as seamless as possible. It's a bit like our hair. You can see everything. So you don't want to take this, the tuck too far back. You want it to follow the line. So last rib, you take it from there. Thin it out, and then I always use thinners in case there's a problem. So every step that you take makes the step before clearer. So you, as you go, you can fix things that you've missed before. So for example, as I was just doing that, I noticed, because I'm looking from a different angle, that there's some hairs there that need to be taken away. So I'm just gonna tidy that up at the same time. You can get to the inside there as well. So then you end up with a beautiful graduated sort of line. And also you can see there's a bit too much hair here. 
because I've taken quite a lot off here, I need that to blend. Some very clever person told me if it looks out of place, it probably is. <laughs> so you chop it off. <laughs> so that's the back half done slightly. Obviously he hasn't got another back leg to do, so. We can move on to the front legs. So with the front legs, we're doing the same effectively as what we did with the back leg on the feet. I literally take it across the front of the paws. So we make sure we're standing properly. So we want to make a nice round foot. Just correct him again. Good boy. Good boy, Mr. Ralph. I do like a tidy foot. Can you see how taking it into a square and then just doing the corners, it just makes it much easier. It, that's just how I do it. I don't know if anyone else does it like that, but that's my thing. So all this hair, we've got to try and match it up to the back legs. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the angulation from here going around into the foot. So you can see where we're going now, can't you? It's really important to make sure that the dog's completely not free. And then, try not to use your fingers. I've got a really bad habit of doing that. Always use your comb. And there's a knot there. That's it. And then, I'm going to use a little bit more spray because I'm finding it's very staticky. Just a couple of squirts. Brush it through. It helps like you don't understand. <laughs> so now I'm just taking the back of the leg to fit in. with the foot. I don't like just chopping that with scissors, so I'm going to use some thinners on this. I might take some weight out with scissors first. So I'm brushing it up, and then I'm just going to take some weight out. So we're starting to get a bit of a leg shape going on now. And again, because you can see every single scissor mark on this dog's coat, I'm going to use thinners quite a lot here to get it to a place where I really like the length. Again, because he's got three legs, usually I'd lift the leg up and scissor up and really get it nice and tidy, but it's really hard to do that with him because he'll topple over. So I'm just gonna have to kind of tidy it up 
using my instinct and I think that this is the way to do it. <laughs> trying to make this job as easy as possible for him. That's the most important thing. It doesn't matter what the haircut looks like at the end of the day, as long as he's tidy and clean and happy. So now it's just a question of blending it all together. Because I've taken this on a shorter extension comb than this, you've got to blend it so that it's seamless, so you can't necessarily see, good boy, any change. So we're just going to take out all the hair. Throat and the chest should be flat. It shouldn't have any kind of anything sticking out. So we're just going to take all that out. Make it nice and flat. Oh, you're such a good boy. Yes, you are. So I'm going to tidy these feet up with thinners. As you can see, they're not the tidiest feet I've ever done. Ah. So we want these to be nice column legs. I think we're getting there. Like I was saying before, whilst I'm doing the next bit, I'm always constantly looking at the rest of the dog for bits that I've missed. And there's always little bits that you've seen, you see. So like here, I can blend this in with the front leg now. So even though you're concentrating on the bit that you're doing, you're still looking at the overall picture rather than just that little bit. You want it to look the best as it can possibly look. So I've got to try and get in on the inside of this leg. And he's, because he's only got one leg on that side, I think I'm going to do it from the other side. So I think that might be the easiest option. So. He's more secure this side, and I'm going to be able to get all that from here. So I'm supporting his weight. All right, darling, OK, I've got you. Bear in mind that the back legs have got to match up to the front legs. You don't want a big, massive, great, big, ginormous front leg and a tilly little back leg. So you want to make sure that it all balances out nicely. So I'm going to try and make this look a little bit tidier. And because he's got a stump there, obviously we want to hide that. We don't want it to show too much. And the skirt runs from it. So I'm just going to tidy the skirt up into the back leg and just round it up. I think that's the best thing that I can do for his position. And then again, we're just going to blend the back into the skirt. Because even though he's only got three legs, he still needs to look fabulous. Keep it nice. So you can see from this side, it just follows on. For the tail, 
I'm going to go for the same length as I did on the body on the top of the tail and then I'm going to do the underneath with scissors. So, 13 millimetres again, taking the top of the tail off and the sides. Tidy that area up whilst you're there. Just going to tighten this up. So this dog was imported, or oh, imported, brought over from America with his dad, and that's why he's still got a, a docked tail, so I want it to be a like, nice carrot shape. Okay. First of all, you go back to the extension comb that you had at the very beginning for the back and you take so you take it right up to the occiput good boy good boy I know you big boo boo Now, it's not like a schnauzer where you would take the top of the head with a tear and you need to leave a little bit of, of hair there, but you don't want it to be as long as that. So a 5F is probably about right, to be honest. So we'll change it to a 5F. Stay there. You feel for the brow bones and you want to go behind the brow bones, you just never clip in front of the brow bones. So feel for the brow bones and then you can clip from behind them. Now you don't want to go as far as you went with the 13 extension comb, you want to leave a longer bit here. And the reason is because you want to make, because they've got the central fall, you want to make it like a seamless progression. You don't want it to be short, long. So you're leaving a little bit there and we're going to do that with thinners later. It helps to elongate the face as well. So it's five there. All right, darling, I know he's getting tired on his feet. You can sit down if you want to. Do you want to sit down? There's a good boy. Okay. So we go from the corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth, down the neck. Uh -uh. Put him on the other side. Uh -uh. Okay. Are you okay? I think this dog prefers to stand. So you can start to see the sort of Wheaton head. So that, can you see it changes direction there? 
that should be about the same length as the nose if you were to press it down. If you go lower, then you've gone too far. But this should all be flat, so you can finish that with thinners afterwards. Because the whole thing's all about balance. This dog definitely feels safer with a noose on, so I'm going to put it on. You feel more confident with that one, don't you? Yes. So the ears. The ears, I'm going to take a little bit shorter. So I'm going to use a 7F on the outside of the ears. And I'm going to get my 40 for the inside. Very carefully, remembering there's a fold in the ear. Same on the other side. Then we go round the ear with scissors to neaten it all up. So I'm just pulling it out. Let me go back to our 5F. Home. Make sure that there's no knots. That's a good boy, stay there. So they have a central fall. So the way I do a central fall, look at that beautiful beard. So I grab the, the hair on the beard, put all this forward, take the scissors to the side of the nose, move it slightly across, and then you take that out. And that gives you the start. And then press it forward. And then I use thinners. So you start to see that really nice. I 
angulation. Same on the other side. Stop it, stop. Can you see me now? And then you blend from the where you from just behind the eyebrows you start to blend in so that it doesn't look too short long. Blend in down here so there's not too much of a big bushy bit. And then once you've done that, I'll go back to my 5F and just tidy those lines up that you've left because you want that beard to be nice and full. So I'm going to take a bit more out of there. Now I'm going to tackle this bit. So we want to keep, stand up baby. What I want to do is just blend this area in with the head. So I'm going with the head there. It just elongates the head a little bit and then we take it off. So really, all we're really doing now is neatening up the lines and making this blend in with the head. Because if you do it with clippers, it just, it literally goes 5F 13 millimetres and you've got to have that graduation. Even though you can't really see it, it's there. That's it. We're done just to tidy it up now. Yeah.